being judgmental is required as a Christian. I'm going to talk about that in, in this sermon today. I'm going to look at 10 different types of judgment that are committed to a Christian that's truly born again. Um, one of the quickest ways that you can tell somebody's lost is when you try to talk to them about salvation, try to preach the gospel to them, and you start to talk about their sin, and they'll say, who are you to judge me? Stop judging me. You have no right to judge me. Who made you God? And all this other stuff like that. But uh, when you get saved, you understand that you are required to exercise judgment in a number of different cases. And I'm going to show you 10 of them. There's probably more, but I'm just going to show you 10 today, types of judgment that are committed to you as a Christian. First, let's start out in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We're going to look, talk about judging the lost. That's the first type we're going to see. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, beginning in verse 12. Turn in your King James Bible. You need to be turning in your Bible. I'm not going to stand here and tell you a bunch of nice little stories and things to illustrate my points and whatever else. No, we're going to go through Scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, beginning in verse 12. Now, if we, now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. It's not my opinions. It's not your opinions. What does the Bible say? That's why we need an authoritative standard. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. This book is a spiritual book. An atheist can't come to it and say, well, I have all the education I can get. I spent, you know, 40 years teaching at Harvard or something like this, and I have, you know, six earned degrees or something, you know, and, and so I can understand. No, you can't. You don't understand this book until you get saved. It's spiritually discerned. Verse 15, but he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Don't try to judge me as a lost person. Don't try to judge me as a false Christian. You aren't going to understand what I'm talking about. Okay? You can fake it for a while as a, as a professing Christian, but when it comes right down to it, um, eventually we're going to part, part ways. You see, because your understanding of salvation and of the Bible itself is intellectual. Mine is spiritual. So, um, that's why I can judge you. Because I have a standard here. And it's not my feelings. Verse 16, For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. I'm born again. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. That's why I can judge. Because I have a standard right here. A spiritual standard. Next we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. I'll show you the second type of judgment. Very windy today, so it's always a challenge. Pages don't always turn the way you want them to. <laughs> Next, the type of judgment is judging sex perversion within the body of Christ. Um, we have a lot of problems today as Christians because there isn't much judgment within the body of Christ. A lot of Christians, well, you know, so and so's a looking at porn, but I don't want to really come down on them and, and things. And, and pornography, looking at pornography is very, very serious, very, you know, it's not the same thing as fornication in the sense of you're not joining physically your body to a harlot, but uh, you're putting it in your mind. It's very, very serious. The Bible says, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. You know, it shall not cleave unto me. Um, you're not supposed to be, you know, looking at evil things like that. All right? Abstain from all appearance of evil, the Bible says. Well, let's read here. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. A guy's fornicating with his father's wife. Now, it doesn't indicate from the text there if that means his birth mother or a stepmother. But the point is, either way, it's serious. It's a problem. And it's reported commonly. The lost people are reporting about it. You know, it's a bad thing when lost people have more discernment than, quote-unquote, saved people. The saved people here in this passage are putting up with it because of probably connections within the church. And the lost people are going, look at these bunch of hypocrites. We don't even do this stuff that these you know, Christians are doing. Something else. Of course, that's back in the first century. That doesn't go on anymore today. Yeah. Verse 2, and ye, have, and ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned, that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. 
For I verily, as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already, as though I were present, concerning him that hath so done this deed. Paul's saying, I don't even need to be there, and I'm judging. You know, that's one of the things that these false Christians will do. They'll say, have you, have you talked to so-and-so in person before you're judging them? I don't need to. Why? I have a standard. You don't line up with the standard, I will judge you. Paul did it. I'm doing it. Every Christian is supposed to do that. We have a standard. You say, well, uh, uh, so-and-so over here, they're, they, they profess to be a Christian, and, but, you know, they, okay, they, had a, uh, you know, they went out and they slept with somebody and, and they kick them out. Well, have you talked to them in, in person? No, I don't need to. Kick them out. Fornication is fornication. It's sin. <laughs> okay? I don't need to know their personal details. I don't need to know why they did it. Well, it was just a moment. I, shut up. Get out. I don't need to talk to you in person. People are so strange. <laughs> Verse 4. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together, and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the Spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Uh, how often is that practiced in modern church, in our modern church times here? Take a saved person that's messing around with sex perversion, you say, Satan, I, let's deliver that guy to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. I hope you die. To a saved brother or sister. I hope the devil comes and kills you. Get away from me, and I hope the devil kills you. Oh, oh, oh. Judgment committed to a New Testament Christian. And don't tell me, well, it was just an apostolic thing for the Apostle Paul. He's rebuking them because they haven't done it themselves. It wasn't some apostolic thing that only he can do. He has a special power or whatever. Uh-uh. No. Christians are supposed to do it. Verse 6. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Purge out therefore the old leaven? Uh, almost like uh, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Oh, but then there's a heretic because he says that you need to have a changed life after salvation. Uh, no, I'm a New Testament born-again Christian. If you think that there's no changed life after salvation, then you're on your way to hell. Okay? <laughs> you're lost. It's all through the New Testament. Verse 8. Therefore let us keep the feast not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters, for then must ye needs go out of the world. You're going to work with co-workers that are lost, and they're going to fornicate, and they're going to be extortioners and everything else. Well, yeah, they're lost. Okay? It's kind of funny, because a lot of times you'll see that lost people that are the, some of the most wicked, fornicating, you know, slobs out there, you know, whatever, a lot of times they'll have some you know, better moral character in other areas than professing Christians. Hmm. Verse 11. But now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner with such an one know not to eat. For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? Paul's not saying don't judge anybody. He's saying, I'm judging lost people, telling them that they're sinners, they need to get saved, but you're also supposed to have judgment within the body of Christ. You're supposed to judge. But them that are without God judgeth. Therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person. Yeah. In other words, the lost people that are out there, God's going to judge them. That doesn't mean you don't judge them. It just means they're under God's judgment. They're under God's wrath. But the saved people that are there, it's up to you and up to me to judge them. And I'll tell you what, I've had to part company with people because of sex perversion. And I believe that they're saved. They're just messing around with the flesh and whatever else, and they fall, and it would... Get away from me. Sorry. I don't want you around. Oh, well, brother, uh, you know, I, I've had a little bit of problems with, you know, 
molesting children, but it's okay. Let me, let me come in here. I'll, I'll run the nursery and take care of your son for you while you're preaching. Uh, no. Oh, you're so judgmental. How could you judge me? Don't you know my spirit? Have you talked to me personally? Have you called me on the phone? <laughs> uh, no, I don't need to. If you're a pervert, you're not going to get anywhere near my son. I'm going to judge you. If you're getting offended, it's because you're lost. I'm going to tell you that. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 through 5. Dare any of you, here's the next type of judgment. Let me just say here real quickly. This is judgment between brethren. We're seeing that in chapter 5, but it's over sex perversion. But now, look at this. Chapter 6. Dare any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? We get back to these here. I'm going to read down to verse 5 quick. If then ye have judgment of, judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. Huh. How many times is that done? I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. Okay, so what's going on there? You say, well, see, you're, you're judging. You've judged a lot of your brothers and, and sisters in Christ. You judge Christians all the time, you know, Denlinger. Uh, no, I judge false prophets and false Christians. You know, it came out recently and, and attacked this, this faker, Robert Breaker, and people say, he's your brother in Christ. Why would you judge your brother? Um, we don't even preach the same gospel. How can we be brethren in Christ? Brothers in Christ and we preach two different Gospels. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, he's not my brother in Christ. He's a liar. He's a deceiver. You say, well, you're judging. Amen. Yes, I am. Okay. But if I have a brother, a, a real, true, genuine brother, and he does something wrong and whatever else, well, you know, try to work it out with him. Don't just say, well, I'm going to sue you. I'm going to go take you to the you know, court or whatever else. No, don't do that. Try to work things out between brethren, people that are preaching the same gospel. Okay, I mean, you know, some some of the people out there, you know, you just got to kind of go back and and just kind of speak really slowly to them so that they understand things. You know, common sense has seemed to evaporate from most people's minds nowadays. You know, uh, somebody that's preaching the same gospel is a brother. Okay, when you see people that preach a different gospel, we're not brothers. All right, uh, Pale Eddie's not my brother. Ander Snake is not my brother. Robert Breaker's not my brother. Okay, and you can make list a whole bunch more. They're not my brothers. I judge them because they preach a false gospel. All right. First Corinthians chapter 11. We'll see next type of judgment here is judging yourself. Judgment's all through the New Testament for a Christian. Stuff, you know, don't, don't be judgmental. Oh, well, that's like saying don't be saved. You say, well, how could you say a thing? Oh, I don't know. Um, do we have an authoritative standard? Yes. Is it, well, the, the Lord says, uh, you know, somebody can follow the Bible, read the Bible, or the catechism, or the Hindu scriptures, or the, the Quran, or the, or the no, this is the truth. All others are lies. Okay, what about a Savior? Jesus Christ is the Savior. Well, well or, no, 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 there's no or. You see, Bible-believing Christians, born-again Christians, are people of absolute truth. We have absolute truth. doesn't mean we're sinlessly perfect. It means we have access to absolute truth. And there are certain things that are debatable. Certain things, you know, diet and holidays and whatever else, those things are debatable. They're in Scripture. Romans chapter 14 talks about it. All right? But when you have absolute truth, points of doctrine, there isn't any kind of, well, I have friends that are post-trib and some that are pre-trib and some that are post-millennial and pre-millennial and amillennial. Uh, and, and, you know, I have some Catholic friends. That, no, no, no. We're people of absolute truth. Therefore, as people of absolute truth, we also have to have absolute judgment. Judging yourself. Another good one. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 31 through 32. Speaking about here, remembering the Lord's death, what we would call communion. Um, 
For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Uh, a really good passage there to prove eternal security, by the way. But uh, when the Lord judges us, He doesn't condemn us with the world. Uh, but what's the secret there? Um, if you judge yourself, then the Lord doesn't have to judge you. Again, uh, you see, that's the changed life of a truly born-again Christian. A truly born-again Christian comes along and they say, Oh, boy, I, I, I'm convicted about this sin that I'm doing, and oh, Lord, I'm sorry. You think about your sin. You're concerned about sin because you don't understand that you're not losing your salvation when you sin, but you're breaking fellowship between you and the Lord. Okay? You judge yourself. It's all about judgment, you see. Absolute standard means judgment. It's simple. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. All right? And, uh, oh, it's just, you're so judgmental. Yeah, yeah, I am so judgmental. I want to judge myself so God doesn't have to come and judge me because his punishments are a lot harsher. <laughs> you know? Not that hard. The next type of judgment is prophesying future judgment to lost people. I'll show you that one. Acts chapter 24. The Apostle Paul on trial here. Another type of judgment. Acts chapter 24, beginning in verse 24. And after certain days, when Felix came with his wife Drusilla, which was a Jewess, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. And as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time, when I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. Hmm, interesting. Not ready to get saved quite yet, Paul. You're kind of shaking me up here a little bit, Paul, but, uh, you know, I'm not quite ready yet. Yeah, you'll hear that quite a bit when you talk to lost people. But uh, what's the point there? He talked about judgment to come. Um, hey, atheist, you know what? If you die... The Bible says, is it, appointed, it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. God knows your thoughts. God sees everything that you've done. And he's going to judge you according to a standard, the standard that you hate. You know why atheists hate this book and try to get rid of this book so much? Because they understand deep down, their, their conscience bears witness that they're going to be judged by this standard right here. That's why they hate the book. They hate it so much because it's judgment. If you remove the judgment and, you know, attacking sin and things out of this book, most atheists would go, yeah, it's, it's, I like the Bible. It's a good book. I, I've found some good things in it and whatever. But all that judgment, boy, they don't like that. Um, and uh, if you miss the catching up, by the way, you're going to go into a time of God's judgment, a time where God's judgment is going to hit this world so fierce, it's going to be horrifying. It's going to be a nightmare to live on this planet when God's judgment is being poured out. And it starts with the Antichrist, by the way. It doesn't go halfway through when the, when the vials are... No. It starts with the Antichrist being unleashed. God controls... God controls everything. Excuse me. Judgment to come. Hmm. You mean uh, Paul should have... I mean, why didn't Paul just stand there and just say, God loves you, and he has a special plan for you. You have a, you have a, a God-shaped hole in your heart that only God can fill. And, and it, it, righteous, temperance, judgment to come. Judgment to come. Huh. Um, lost people come and they say, uh, you're, you're so judgmental. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh-huh, yep. If you don't repent of your sins, come to the Lord as a sinner and uh, cry out to Him for mercy, the gospel, um, if you don't do that, you're going to go to hell and you're going to burn forever. God's going to give you an eternal soul so that you can burn forever. You understand that? The Bible says, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Do you realize that God is, is not going to make you go into eternity in this current state that you're in, the body that you have? Because it'd burn up pretty quick. God is actually going to give you a special body that feels pain, understands torment, and it lives forever. And you are tormented forever. Ever. You say, that's so judgmental. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm finally glad that you're getting it. Okay? <laughs> or glad that you're finally getting it. Maybe that would have been a better way to say it. 
I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> see, I can laugh because I know I'm going to heaven, you know, and I know a lot of people that, you know, if you're going to get saved, if you have enough sense, you know, you'll check into these things and um, people get saved. But if you're just a wicked idiot out there and you, you really could care less and whatever else, um, it doesn't matter how I bring things across and whatever else. I could be nice, I could be kind and sweet and, you know, effeminate and whatever else like you prefer. But uh, you're still not going to get saved. So <laughs> I've been ministry a long time. I, I've dealt with a lot of people and I know how people are. Okay, Romans chapter 14. Again, personal judgment. We'll see this here, another type of judgment that needs to be there for a Christian. Romans chapter 14. Thankfully, the winds died down a little bit, so I can turn a little bit better. Romans chapter 14, verse 10 through 13. For to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both... Oh, no, that was verse 9. I'll read it. Um, both of the dead and living. But why dost thou judge thy brother, or why dost thou, thy, thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Again, be careful when you're judging fellow Christians. Right? Um, rebuke, you know... Uh, you know, tell them if they're doing wrong, come to them in a spirit of love and whatever else, certainly. But, uh, you know, be, be careful. You know, that's why I'm very careful about certain ministries and things just coming out lock, stock, and barrel against them because uh, I'm not sure. And I just kind of have to sit back and watch them for a while and think, okay, are they right doctrinally in these important areas and whatever else? And if they get rebuked, how do they handle it and whatever? Be careful. <clears throat> Verse 11, as it, For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Let us not therefore judge one another any more, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Again, you got to be careful that you don't cause a brother or a sister to fall. Um, there are certain things that you can do as a Christian uh, that you ought not to do around certain brethren because it can cause them to stumble and fall. Uh, we should be helping each other. We should be building each other up uh, within the body of Christ. And um, that's very important. But again, you say, well, how's that judgment? Well, you know, we're going to be judged according to what we've done in this life. So you've got to keep that in the back of your mind. Stay in good fellowship with the Lord and the brethren, the saved brethren. All right? 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We're going to look at uh, being joined in judgment. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. How is that possible? We have a standard. Well, brother, it's okay. I mean, you want to believe again that this whole teaching of the Godhead thing, and you want to be against the Trinity? Well, we're okay. We can. We believe in the Trinity. You believe in the Godhead. We can. No, no. The the word Trinity is not in there. It's not as. It's not a part of our standard. Oh, brother, I think that you need to be in a church, a, a good local church. No scripture. Sorry, we're not going to agree. I have a standard, and I want to be in the same mind, the same judgment with my brothers and sisters in Christ. And the only way we can do it is to submit to the Word of God. That's the only way. No creeds, no confessions of faith, no uh, books of doctrine or whatever else, special church discipline. Th the Bible and the Bible alone, the King James Bible, not the NIV, the NASV, the RSV, the ESV, whatever. The King James Bible. We are King James Bible believing Christians. That's what I am. That's what my followers are. My friends, my brothers and sisters in Christ, people that follow the ministry. I'm not trying to say I'm Jesus Christ is the head of the ministry. I'm not the head of the ministry. You understand what I'm saying? But uh, that's where the standard's supposed to be. That's how we can speak the same thing and being the same judgment. First Corinthians chapter seven. First Corinthians chapter seven. Now we're going to go to some non-doctrinal judgment. First Corinthians chapter 7. We can get there. Verse 39 and 40. 
The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth, but if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will, only in the Lord. But she is happier if she so abide after my judgment, and I think also that I have the Spirit of God. Okay, Paul is saying, if you are a woman that's married and your husband dies, you can go out and get remarried. But I think you'd be better off if you stayed single. But that's just my judgment. See, he's not saying if you are married as a woman and your husband dies, you have to stay single. This is doctrine from the Lord. No, he's saying this is just my judgment. Okay, again, you can offer advice to Christians and say, well, this is just my opinion here. This is just my judgment on this issue. I'm not going to say that this is directly in the scriptures, but what you ought to do is you ought to get into this or get into that. All right. Um, you can, you can come up with all kinds of different examples of that, but I think you know what I'm saying here. Again, there are I mean, we're, we're even committed to the point of giving opinions and our judgment on certain matters. Uh, the, the Christian life is all about truth. It's all about absolutes. It's all about, you know, this is what works for me. How about you try that? I can't show you, you know, it's not commanded in Scripture, um, you know, whatever, uh, but I would recommend this. If you want my judgment on the matter, you know, we just, we aren't supposed to just sit around and just be these just brain dead zombie people that just have no opinions on anything. And just anybody that says they're a Christian, we just go, praise the Lord, they're saved, they're Christian. I'm not going to judge anything. Uh, you're missing the mark. If that's the way you are as a Christian, we're supposed to give our judgment. Okay, two more types of judgment here. Philippians chapter 1. And I'll tell you what, it's so important to have good, strong judgment in your life as a Christian. And the problems that we have, most of the problems we have today in the body of Christ are because people don't want to judge. Philippians chapter 1, verse 1 through 11. I went one page too far. Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi, with the bishops and deacons, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all making request with joy, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, and as much as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. Why would Paul tell a group of Christians that I, I hope as you're growing in the Lord um, that you're actually getting more judgment. You're going to be more judgmental as you grow up as Christians. And it's in uh, love. Loving judgment? Yeah. A lot of lost people don't understand that. When I say, you're going to go to hell and burn forever. You say, well, that's, that's hateful. That's, that's hate speech. No, because you see, I offer the solution. Unless you get saved. I love you. That's why I'm judging you. You know, if, if, I, if I really didn't love people, you know what I would do? I'd go back to the secular world. I'd quit this ministry thing. I mean, what in the world? Uh, no idea when, a, when uh, you know, there's no such thing as a paycheck. It's just people, free will offerings and things like that. You can go for a long time sometimes. Nobody gives a cent towards the ministry. God places it on somebody's heart, give to the ministry. Okay, they do. Uh, going back to the uh, uh, consistent income thing of a worldly income, you know, going to an art show and people aren't coming up to me and, and yelling at me and things and cussing me out and, and trying to expose me and all this stuff, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so why do I do it? For the money? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I just, I love how my enemies, they try to make me out to be some kind of 
Kenneth Copeland Jr. or something like this, you know. Um, my total net worth is probably less than $100,000. And uh, not probably, it is worth less than $100,000. Everything I own, uh, less than $100,000. And Kenneth Copeland's flying around in $22 million jets. And somehow I'm the same spirit as he is. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, why am I here? Because I love you. And I love you enough to judge you. And I love you enough to judge false prophets out there. And to get angry about false prophets and to call them names and, and, and to get ticked off. Because I see them damning people to hell. That's love. And you know what? As you grow up as a Christian, you're going to have that same kind of love too. You will. God's going to put that kind of love in you that you're going to start to hate every false way. And you're going to get a little bit sarcastic and say, that guy's a false prophet. You know, false prophets have this thing that they just want to be able to come along and just, just lie and steal and cheat and everything else and then don't you dare talk against me. You know, and when you talk against them, oh, how, how unloving of you, how judgmental. But let's continue. Verse 10. That ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory and praise of God. Hmm. Uh, you may approve things that are excellent. Uh, you know, that's another thing that we do. You say, why would a preacher waste his time doing cooking videos or something? Um, because I'm trying to approve things that are excellent. Um, why would a preacher do all kinds of different things that we do? My wife and I and things and things that we research and check into and whatever. Because we're trying to approve things that are excellent. To save you, the body of Christ, the time. That's why we do what we do. Um, I'll just tell you right now, another mark of the false prophet. Uh, every false prophet I've ever heard of, specifically in the Baptist churches, they all talk about junk food and promote junk food and laugh at natural health. Um, do you realize that you're laughing at what God made? When you, when you say, I want my KFC and I want my Burger King and I want this, I want I like a lot of junk food, brother. Uh, and, and you make fun of things that are out here in nature. You're making fun of what God made. You know, and I, I mean, good night. I've been to so many Baptist churches and you get the thing of, of you know, the guys up there. Oh, not at all. All, all you can eat smorgasbord the other day. Amen. Amen. Yeah, amen. Now preach it, brother. You know, and the guy's going. Yeah, I, I, I'd adjust my pants to get out of there, boy. I tell you, I, I got my money's worth. Amen. Amen. Preach it, brother. Do we have any prayer requests? Oh, yeah, brother. I'm, I got diagnosed with cancer. And, uh, oh, brother, so-and-so, he's got diabetes. And, and this sister over here, she's dying of this disease, and they're dying of that disease and whatever else. But let's make fun of organic food and natural health and herbs. You're brilliant. Uh, no, actually, you're lost. Uh, I wouldn't follow any preacher out there that tells you to tells you to eat junk food. Not one. Why? They're not approving things that are excellent. See, that's judgmental. You getting it? You understanding? Uh, you know what I do when I go to the store? There are whole aisles that I judge. I look down that aisle and I see all those different colors of boxes and all the little cans inside the boxes. And I see Sprite. Mountain Dew, Coca-Cola, Dr. Pepper, and I say, I'm not walking down there. Oh, well, brother, how could you be so judgmental? You see what I'm saying? As Christians, we must judge. It's an integral part of us, our lives as saved Christians. The Holy Spirit of truth dwells within us, and he tells us, don't eat that, don't touch that, don't look at that, don't listen to that. But I'm a bad Christian because I go out and I judge these things, huh? I tell people, don't mess with Kentucky Fried Chicken. Don't mess with rock music. It'll mess you up in the head. And it will. Primary emphasis on rhythm, on beat that's faster than your natural heart rhythm. It leads to aggression. Scientific research to back that up. Not to mention the, the roots of rock music. It's all come from, from Satanism, voodoo, and witchcraft. But that's okay, because you can put Christian lyrics to it. Uh-huh. It'll mess you up. What are you doing there, Brian? Uh, I'm judging. I'm judging. I'm approving things that are excellent. 
hey, you know, use the uh, new version. It'll mess you up. This one will set you straight. King James Bible, it's what you want to read. You say, you would judge somebody using this new version? Yes, I would. I'm going to be uh, judgmental. You get some guy that tells you there's no repentance connected to salvation. He's lost and on his way to hell. Judgment. You know why? Because I love you enough to tell you the truth, I don't want you following him into hell. Some guy says, when it says in Romans chapter 10, call upon the name of whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord to be saved, call does not mean ask. You're a liar. You're a liar. He's trying to take you to hell with him. He wants company. I'm judging. Why? Because I approve things that are excellent. Let's finish up here. First Peter chapter 4. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Because this is what we need, brethren. You know, one of the problems with being uh, pre-trib, if you want to call it that, uh, believing that we get, we get called up before the time of Jacob's trouble, is sometimes you just get kind of pessimistic and you say, you know what, uh, things are just going to keep getting worse and worse, so I'm just going to let the body of Christ go to, you know, just fall apart. I was going to say something else there, but you can't go to hell if you're a Christian. So, But, you know, I'm just going to let the, the, the church just fall around or fall down around me because that's what's prophesied. So I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to, you know, no, because the Lord's going to come back here probably, you know, it's got to be soon. So just eh, I'm not going to bother fighting or whatever else. Uh, we got to fight right up until the end, brethren. OK, let your light shine. First Peter, chapter four. Verse 10 through 18. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. You're a steward. God committed you to, to you the gospel. He commits to you his word. You're to prove things that are excellent. Verse 11. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. If you're speaking, don't use a lot of your own words. Oracles of God. This book right here. Let the scriptures do your speaking for you. Verse 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. Uh, you know why that happens? Why uh, your name is cast out as evil? Why, why people persecute you? Is it because you're just uh, non-judgmental? You're diversity and happy and loving and kind and communitarian? At, uh, no. Um, it's because you're judgmental. Because God calls you to say, hey, th that's not right. Hey, I, I, I'm not going to eat that. Shut that off. I'm not going to watch that. I don't want to see that. I'm not going to dress like that. I'm not going to listen to that kind of music. I'm not going to... Judgment, 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 judgment. Some brother messing around playing video games. Well, I love this brother in the Lord. But I don't want to hurt him. But you know what? The video games are messing him up. You pray and you say, Lord... How do I tell him? Give me an opportunity. I need, I need to talk to him. Just start convicting his heart. You, you pray to be able to talk to the brother about that. A sister is involved in something or whatever. Whatever the, the situation is, we have to judge. Judgment is required as a Christian. Without judgment, what do we have? We have a mess. Verse 15, but let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Uh, I've seen that thing the righteous scarcely be saved. There are a lot of people that uh, do their very best to convince me that they're lost. <laughs> I mean, they work hard at it, you know. Uh, 
why don't you just get saved and just become a fanatic for Jesus Christ? If the Bible says it, then do it. What do you mess around with the world for? Are you approving things that are excellent? Or are you uh, playing with fire? Play around with the world? Well, I'm not quite ready to, to give up looking like the world because, you know, after all, what would they think? I might be considered judgmental. I was so impressed to see a, a lost woman out in Seattle, or uh, was it uh, Port? Port Townsend, Washington. Port Townsend, Washington, uh, not too far from Seattle. And uh, she dresses in Victorian dresses. As far as I can tell, she's lost. I don't, I don't think she's saved or anything. And uh, she has women, baby boomer type of women coming up to her and screaming in her face. And she takes her stands. And yet some of you out there that profess to be Christians, you won't dress modestly. Are you approving things that are excellent? No, you're not. You say, Brian, you're being judgmental. Amen. Yes, I am. You see, it's, it's this thing all the time that I'm dealing with with Christians. What is it? If the righteous scarcely be saved. I just, I, you know, I don't get it. I mean, I, I realize we all struggle with sins. We all struggle with things. We all have these issues that we deal with. There's the flesh. There, I understand all that. But my word, people, get things sorted out. Get it straightened out. It just... And I get this thing too. I want to say this as well, and then we'll close. Um, people say, well, well, Brian, why don't you go out and attack the world and whatever else? Uh, because there's too much infiltration going on in the body of Christ. The house of God is just filled to the gills with lost people. Um, I will tell you right now, the very worst thing that ever happened to the body of Christ is church buildings. Because lost people like to come to church. It's a good social club. Uh, another thing that's good about church buildings, I'm going to be doing a study on this in the future, but church buildings are for lost people. Um, it's a social club, number one. Number two, it's an opportunity to change the Word of God. Why are there so many different churches? We all supposedly have the same standard. But you come, you overthrow the scriptures with what your church denomination does and what the, how they practice. Status, symbol, whatever else. There's a whole bunch of things I'm going to be coming out with on church buildings. But that's one of the worst things that happened. Because what it has done is it's brought a whole bunch of lost people, hordes and hordes and hordes of lost people, into a church type of setting and taught them Bible terminology. So then they come out and they say, we're the Christians. Who are you to judge me? out of their own mouth, they're actually condemning themselves. Because if you're truly saved, you understand that judgment is part of your salvation. Judgment is committed to you as a Christian because you're given an absolute standard of truth. Um, I want to pray for something. And, and I mean this in all sincerity. And I want you to pray for it as well as a saved brother or sister in the Lord. I pray that the Lord makes a division between saved and lost much greater by whatever means necessary. You say, Brian, do you mean that? Yes, I mean that. You say, well, Brian, that, that could mean the destruction of our country and pers open persecution of the Christians. Bring it on. I hope so. Because I'm sick and tired of people playing Christian. And I know a lot of you fakers out there are going to drop like flies if all of a sudden it means prison time for being a Bible-believing Christian. A lot of you people are just going to fall away like a bunch of dead leaves off of a tree. So, let's pray for that. I've seen a lot of these dividing lines. I know me and the brethren have talked about it quite a bit, you know, and, and these things come up, and, and, you know, I've preached on the Godhead thing for years and years and years, and all of a sudden Dellinger's a heretic because he preaches about the Godhead. Uh, uh, no, I preached about that for many years. Uh, Dellinger's a heretic because he teaches Lordship Salvation. I don't teach Lordship Salvation. I never have. I preach against Lordship Salvation. They change the terms. The easy believism, intellectual believism, whatever you want to call them. Um, let's keep these dividing lines coming. Okay? Because I want to split off from you heretics out there. You heretics that can't stop watching my videos, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, that's going to be it. Thank you to all those out there that do support the ministry. We really do appreciate you. Um, and if you're struggling with some things, flesh type of stuff and whatever else, good night, man. Don't keep wasting time. Um, you're going to be judged. If we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Um, you need to judge yourself.
Check yourself. That's Christian. Okay? So that is going to be it, and we'll see you in the next video.